Hey everybody. Okay, I'm at the top of page 375, and we found out that Sirius Black um, is not guilty of the things they said. It was actually one of their other friends who betrayed them, Peter Pettigrew, has been who has been disguised as Scabbers all along. So right now, Sirius Black is saying that you should have let Voldemort kill you as opposed to um, betraying James and Lily and getting them killed. So that's where we are right now. Then you should have died, roared Black. Died rather than betray your friends, as we would have done for you. Black and Lupin stood shoulder to shoulder, wands raised. You should have realized, said Lupin quietly, if Voldemort didn't kill you, we would. Goodbye, Peter. Hermione covered her face with her hands and turned to the wall. No! Harry yelled. He ran forward, placing himself in front, Pettigrew facing the wands. You can't kill him, he said breathlessly. You can't. Black and Lupin both looked staggered. Harry, this piece of vermin is the reason you have no parents, Black snarled. This cringing bit of filth would have seen you die too without turning a hair. You heard him. His own stinking skin meant more to him than your whole family. I know, Harry panted. We'll take him up to the castle. We'll hand him over to the Dementors. He can go to Azkaban, but don't kill him. Harry! gasped Pettigrew, and he flung his arms around Harry's knees. You, thank you! It's more than I deserve. Thank you! Get off me! Harry spat, throwing Pettigrew's hands off him in disgust. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it because I don't reckon my dad would have wanted them to become killers just for you. No one moved or made a sound except Pettigrew, whose breath was coming in wheezes as he clutched his chest. Black and Lupin were looking at each other. Then, with one movement, they lowered their wands. You're the only person who has the right to decide, Harry, said Black, but think. Think what he did. He can go to Azkaban, Harry repeated. If anyone deserves that place, he does. Pettigrew was still wheezing behind him. Very well, said Lupin. Stand aside, Harry. Harry hesitated. I'm going to tie him up, said Lupin. That's all, I swear. Harry stepped out of the way. Thin cords shot from Lupin's wand this time, and next moment Pettigrew was wriggling on the floor, bound and gagged. But if you transform Peter, growled Black, his own wand pointing at Pettigrew too, we will kill you. You agree, Harry? Harry looked down at the pitiful figure on the floor and nodded so that Pettigrew could see him. Right, said Lupin, suddenly businesslike. Ron, I can't mend bones nearly as well as Madame Pomfrey, so I think it's best if we just strap your leg up until we can get you to the hospital wing. He hurried over to Ron, bent down, tapped Ron's leg with his wand, and muttered, Ferula! Bandages spun up Ron's leg, strapping it tightly to a splint. Lupin helped him to his feet. Ron put his weight gingerly on the leg and didn't wince. That's better, he said. Thanks. What about Professor Snape? said Hermione in a small voice, looking down at Snape's prone figure. There's nothing seriously wrong with him, said Lupin, bending over Snape and checking his pulse. You were just a little over-enthusiastic. Still out cold, uh, perhaps it will be best if we don't revive him until we're safely back in the castle. We can take him like this. He muttered, Mobila corpus, as though invisible strings were tied to Snape's wrists, neck, and knees. He was pulled into a standing position, head still lolling unpleasantly like a grotesque puppet. He hung a few inches above the ground, his limp feet dangling. Lupin picked up the invisibility cloak and tucked it safely into his pocket. And two of us should be chained to this, said Black, nudging Pettigrew with his toe, just to make sure. I'll do it, said Lupin. And me, said Ron savagely, limping forward. Black conjured heavy manacles from thin air. Soon Pettigrew was upright again. Left arm chained to Lupin's right, right arm to Ron's left. Ron's face was set. He seemed to have taken Scabber's true identity as a personal insult. Crookshanks leapt lightly off the bed and led the way out of the room. His bottle brush tail held jauntily high. We're on chapter 20. The Dementor's Kiss. Harry had never been part of a stranger group. Crookshanks led the way down the stairs. Lupin, Pettigrew, and Ron went next, looking like entrance in a six-legged race. Next came Professor Snape, drifting creepily along, his toes hitting each stair as they descended, held up by his own wand, which was being pointed at him by Sirius. Harry and Hermione brought up the rear. Getting back into the tunnel was difficult. Lupin, Pettigrew, and Ron had to turn sideways to manage it. Lupin still had Pettigrew covered with his wand. Harry could see them edging awkwardly along the tunnel in single file. Crookshanks was still in the lead. Harry went right after Black, who was still making Snape drift along ahead of them. He kept bumping his lolling head on the low ceiling. Harry had the impression Black was making no effort to prevent this. You know what this means, 
Black said abruptly to Harry as they made their slow progress along the tunnel. Turning Pettigrew in? You're free, said Harry. Yes, said Black, but I'm also... I don't know if anyone ever told you. I'm your godfather. Yeah, I knew that, said Harry. Well, your parents appointed me your guardian, said Black stiffly. If anything happened to them... Harry waited. Did Black mean what he thought he meant? I'll understand, of course, if you want to stay with your aunt and uncle, said Black, but... Well, think about it. Once my name's cleared, if you wanted a, a different home... Some sort of explosion took place in the pit of Harry's stomach. What? Live with you? He said, accidentally cracking his head on a bit of rock protruding from the ceiling. Leave the Dursleys? Of course, I thought you wouldn't want to, said Black quickly. I understand. I just thought I'd... Are you insane? Said Harry, his voice easily as croaky as Black's. Of course I want to leave the Dursleys. Have you got a house? When can I move in? Black turned right around to look at him. Snape's head was scraping the ceiling, but Black didn't seem to care. You want to? He said. You mean it? Yeah, I mean it, said Harry. Black's gaunt face broke into the first true smile Harry had seen upon it. The difference it made was startling, as though a person ten years younger were shining through the starved mask. For a moment he was recognizable as the man who had laughed at Harry's parents' wedding. They did not speak again until they had reached the end of the tunnel. Crookshank started up first. He had evidently pressed his paw to the knot on the trunk, because Lupin, Pettigrew, and Ron clambered upward without any sound of savaging branches. Black saw Snape up through the hole, then stood back for Harry and Hermione to pass. At last all of them were out. The grounds were very dark now. The only light came from the distant windows of the castle. Without a word, they set off. Pettigrew was still wheezing and occasionally whimpering. Harry's mind was buzzing. He was going to leave the Dursleys. He was going to live with Sirius Black, his parents' best friend. He felt dazed. What would happen when he told the Dursleys he was going to live with the convict they'd seen on television? One wrong move, Peter, said Lupin threateningly ahead. His wand was still pointed sideways at Pettigrew's chest. Silently, they tramped through the grounds, the castle lights growing slowly larger. Snape was still drifting weirdly ahead of Black, his chin bumping on his chest. And then, a cloud shifted. There were suddenly dim shadows on the ground. Their party was bathed in moonlight. Snape collided with Lupin, Pettigrew, and Ron, who had stopped abruptly. Black froze. He flung out one arm to make Harry and Hermione stop. Harry could see Lupin's silhouette. He had gone rigid. Then his limbs began to shake. Oh my! Hermione gasped. He didn't take his potion tonight. He's not safe. Run! Black whispered. Run! Now! But Harry couldn't run. Ron was chained to Pettigrew and Lupin. He leapt forward, but Black caught him around the chest and threw him back. Leave it to me! Run! There was a terrible snarling noise. Lupin's head was lengthening. So was his body. His shoulders were hunching. Hair was sprouting visibly on his face and hands, which were curling into clawed paws. Crookshank's hair was on end. He was backing away. As the werewolf reared, snapping its long jaws, Sirius disappeared from Harry's side. He had transformed. The enormous bear-like dog bounded forward. As the werewolf wrenched itself free of the manacle binding it, the dog seized it about the neck and pulled it backward, away from Ron and Pettigrew. They were locked jaw to jaw, claws ripping at each other. Harry stood transfixed by the sight, too intent upon the battle to notice anything else. It was Hermione's scream that alerted him. Pettigrew had dived for Lupin's dropped wand. Ron, unsteady on his bandaged leg, fell. There was a bang, a burst of light, and Ron lay motionless on the ground. Another bang, Crookshanks flew into the air and back to the earth in a heap. Expelliarmus! Harry yelled, pointing his own wand at Pettigrew. Lupin's wand flew high into the air and out of sight. Stay where you are! Harry shouted, running forward. Too late. Pettigrew had transformed. Harry saw his bald tail whip through the manacle on Ron's outstretched arm and heard a scurrying through the grass. There was a howl and a rumbling growl. Harry turned to see the werewolf taking flight. It was galloping into the forest. Sirius, he's gone! Pettigrew transformed! Harry yelled. Black was bleeding. There were gashes across his muzzle and back, but at Harry's words, he scrambled up again, and in an instant, the sound of his paws faded to silence as he pounded away across the grounds. Harry and Hermione dashed over to Ron. What did he do to him? Hermione whispered. Ron's eyes were only half closed. His mouth hung open. He was definitely alive. They could hear him breathing, but he didn't seem to recognize them. I don't know. Harry looked desperately around, Black and Lupin both gone. They had no one but Snape for company, still hanging unconscious in midair. We'd better get them up to the castle and tell someone, said Harry, pushing his hair out of his eyes, trying to think straight. Come, 
But then, from beyond the range of their vision, they heard a yelping, a whining, a dog in pain. Serious, Harry muttered, staring into the darkness. He had a moment's indecision, but there was nothing they could do for Ron at the moment, and by the sound of it, Black was in trouble. Harry set off at a run, Hermione right behind him. The yelping seemed to be coming from the ground near the edge of the lake. They pelted toward it, and Harry, running flat out, felt the cold without realizing what it must mean. The yelping stopped abruptly. As they reached the lake shore, they saw why. Sirius had turned back into a man. He was crouched on all fours, his hands over his head. No, he moaned. No, please. And then Harry saw them, Dementors, at least a hundred of them, gliding in a black mass around the lake toward them. He spun around, the familiar icy cold penetrating his insides. Fog starting to obscure his vision. More were appearing out of the darkness on every side. They were encircling them. Hermione, think of something happy, Harry yelled, raising his wand, blinking furiously to try and clear his vision, shaking his head to rid it of the faint screaming that had started inside it. I'm going to live with my godfather. I'm leaving the Dursleys. He forced himself to think of Black, and only Black, and began to chant, Expecto Patronum! Expecto Patronum! Black gave a shudder, rolled over, and lay motionless on the ground, pale as death. He'll be all right. I'm going to go and live with him. Expecto Patronum! Hermione, help me! Expecto Patronum! Expecto! Hermione whispered, Expecto! Expecto! But she couldn't do it. The Dementors were closing in, barely ten feet from them. They formed a solid wall around Harry and Hermione, and were getting closer. Expecto Patronum! Harry yelled, trying to blot the screaming from his ears. Expecto Patronum! A thin wisp of silver escaped his wand and hovered like mist before him. At the same moment, Harry felt Hermione collapse next to him. He was alone, completely alone. Expecto! Expecto Patronum! Harry felt his knees hit the cold grass. Fog was clouding his eyes. With a huge effort, he fought to remember. Sirius was innocent. Innocent. We'll be okay. I'm going to live with him. Expecto Patronum! He gasped. By the feeble light of his formless Patronus, he saw a Dementor halt very close to him. It couldn't walk through the cloud of silver mist Harry had conjured. A dead, slimy hand slid out from under the cloak. It made a gesture as though to sweep the Patronus aside. No, no! Harry gasped. He's innocent! Expecto! Expecto Patronum! He could feel them watching him, hearing their rattling breath like an evil wind around him. The nearest Dementor seemed to be considering him. Then it raised both its rotting hands and lowered its hood. Where there should have been eyes, there was only thin, gray, scab skin stretched blankly over empty sockets. But there was a mouth, a gaping, shapeless hole, sucking the air with the sound of a death rattle. A paralyzing terror filled Harry so that he couldn't move or speak. His Patronus flickered and died. White fog was blinding him. He had to fight. Expecto Patronum! He couldn't see, and in the distance he heard the familiar screaming. Expecto Patronum! He groped in the mist for Sirius and found his arm. They weren't going to take him. But a pair of strong, clammy hands suddenly attached themselves around Harry's neck. They were forcing his face upward. He could feel its breath. It was going to get rid of him first. He could feel its putrid breath. His mother was screaming in his ears. She was going to be the last thing he ever heard. And then, through the fog that was drowning him, he thought he saw a silvery light growing brighter and brighter. He felt himself fall forward onto the grass. Face down, too weak to move, sick and shaking, Harry opened his eyes. The Dementor must have released him. The blinding light was illuminating the grass around him. The screaming had stopped. The cold was ebbing away. Something was driving the Dementors back. It was circling around him and Black and Hermione. They were leaving. The air was warm again. With every ounce of strength he could muster, Harry raised his head a few inches and saw an animal amid the light galloping away across the lake. Eyes blurred with sweat, Harry tried to make out what it was. It was as bright as a unicorn. Fighting to stay conscious, Harry watched its canter to a halt as it reached the opposite shore. For a moment, Harry saw, by its brightness, somebody welcoming it back, raising his hand to pat it. Someone who looked strangely familiar, but it couldn't be. Harry didn't understand. He couldn't think any more. He felt the last of his strength leave him, and his head hit the ground as he fainted. All right, guys, we're, uh, that was the end of Chapter 20. Next video, we start on Chapter 21, Hermione's Secrets. We're almost to the end. Can you believe it?